It's finally done. After 14 years and $5 billion, Africa's most ambitious megaproject, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, is complete. This dam is absolutely enormous. A structure so massive, it dwarfs the Hoover Dam with a reservoir twice the size of New York City, while the dam itself is taller than the Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric power in China. But this is more than just the largest hydroelectric dam in Africa. It's Ethiopia's boldest attempt to power its future, provide electricity to millions, and establish itself as a regional energy hub. Yet this ambition could also be the very spark that triggers a crisis. Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia are entangled in a complex struggle over the Nile's waters, a battle that could start a war. Building something this massive was never going to be easy. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, known as GERD, isn't just a big dam, it's a mega dam. A colossal feat of engineering made from 10.2 million cubic meters of roller compacted concrete, spanning 1,780 meters long and towering 155 meters high, nearly half the height of the Eiffel Tower. But it's the reservoir that truly defies belief. When filled, it will hold up to 74 billion cubic meters of water, enough to cover the entire city of London several times over and more than all the reservoirs in Ethiopia combined. Construction began in 2011, and from the very start, Ethiopia aimed to create the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa. The first major milestone came in 2013, when Ethiopia casually diverted the Blue Nile, a bold move that signaled their determination. Over the years, the dam underwent five filling phases, steadily building up its reservoir to a mind-boggling 74 billion cubic meters of water. And all of this happened despite loud objections from Egypt and Sudan. This isn't just a monument of concrete and ambition. Once fully operational, GERD is expected to generate up to 5,150 megawatts of electricity, more than double Ethiopia's previous output. Two outdoor power stations situated on either bank of the river will turn the relentless force of water into pure power. And that's just the beginning of what Ethiopia hopes to achieve. Getting here wasn't smooth sailing. Construction delays, funding issues and political pressure have plagued the project since day one. But now that the dam is finally complete, Ethiopia stands at a crossroads. And the world is watching to see what happens next. You see, the completion of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has been a moment of national pride for Ethiopia. A transformative project that promises to inject nearly $6.79 billion into the economy, boost energy production by 142.7% and bring electricity to an estimated 76 million people. It's a self-funded symbol of resilience and ambition marking Ethiopia's emergence as a potential energy powerhouse in Africa. But while Ethiopia celebrates its triumph, Egypt and Sudan are sounding the alarm. Two nations deeply fearful of what this dam means for their future and seemingly willing to confront the consequences to secure their water supply. The problem? The Nile isn't just a river. It's a lifeline. For Egypt, the Nile is everything. An astounding 97% of Egypt's water comes from this one source. And with a population of over 100 million people, the stakes couldn't be higher. Without the Nile, Egypt's agriculture, industry and even daily life could come to a screeching halt. President el-Sisi of Egypt has made it clear. Touch a drop of Egypt's water and all options are open. Egypt's desperation is rooted in dire predictions. The UN has warned that Egypt could run out of water by 2025, and with Ethiopia now controlling the flow of the Blue Nile, that nightmare scenario is closer than ever. Sudan, meanwhile, finds itself caught in the middle. On one hand, the dam promises a steady supply of hydropower and improved irrigation, which could potentially add up to $66 billion to its GDP by 2060. But on the other, Sudan has already experienced unpredictable water releases causing droughts, floods and power shortages. The fear of a catastrophic technical failure is ever-present. Ethiopia, however, sees GERD as a triumph, 
Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed recently declared, enough water has been stored, the dam will not harm the downstream countries. Government officials have repeatedly assured downstream countries that they will release water if shortages occur, although critics remain sceptical about the feasibility of such releases. Negotiations have stalled, with Ethiopia rejecting Egypt's demand for a legally binding agreement. Talks have reached the United Nations Security Council, but no resolution has been achieved. So, what happens when a nation of over 100 million people feels its very existence threatened? And what happens when another nation sees this same project as the key to its economic miracle? The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has sparked a conflict that may not end any time soon. But Ethiopia and Egypt aren't alone in their struggle over water. All over the world, other megaprojects are igniting fierce debates over water rights and resources. In Asia, China's grand ambition to build the world's largest dam on the Brahmaputra River, known locally as Yalong Tsangpo, has drawn sharp opposition from India. New Delhi fears Beijing could one day weaponize the river's flow, starving India's northeastern states during droughts or unleashing destructive floods during monsoons. The Indian government has responded by constructing its own counter-dam on the Siang River escalating tensions between the two nuclear powers in a high-stakes game of control over water. Meanwhile, Turkey's Elisu Dam on the Tigris River has severely affected water supplies for Iraq and Syria, increasing desertification and sparking political disputes over water rights. Even within the United States, the Glen Canyon Dam on the Colorado River is at the centre of disputes between states like California, Arizona and Nevada over dwindling water resources. But not every water megaproject ends in conflict. Some nations have found ways to work together and build projects that benefit everyone. In South America, the Ataipu Dam stands as a shining example of cooperation. Built on the Parana River between Brazil and Paraguay, it transformed a border dispute into one of the world's most successful hydroelectric projects. Today, The Ataipu Dam supplies nearly 90% of Paraguay's electricity and around 15% of Brazil's. It's a model of shared governance and mutual benefit. On the Zambezi River, Zambia and Zimbabwe came together to build the Kariba Dam. This collaborative effort created the largest man-made reservoir in the world, providing hydropower to both nations for decades. Even the United States and Canada have found ways to manage shared water resources through the Columbia River Treaty. This agreement has provided flood control, power generation and irrigation to both countries, proving that cooperation can overcome even the most daunting of challenges. But as the world grapples with increasingly scarce water resources, the question remains. Are megaprojects like the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam truly the solution to these challenges? Or are they creating more problems than they solve? Can countries work together to make these projects a force for good? Or are we doomed to see more conflicts emerge? What do you think? Are megaprojects the key to a brighter future? Or just a ticking time bomb? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And make sure to like, share and subscribe for more Megabuild stories.